Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Welcome back to another fun and exciting episode of Next to Madison. I'm your host, Madison Malloy. And on this episode, gosh, I love this episode, you guys. Um, I sat down with this amazing, amazing guest. You'll hear it right after the break, but she is a functional medicine expert. I explain it in the intro. You are not going to want to miss this episode. We talk about everything from like 5G and the impacts, how to keep yourself safe, um, the rise in like tumors with the cell phones, why you should shut your phone off at night. We talk about the essential vitamins you need to be taking, how to make sure you're eating clean, um, what you can do to really take charge of your health. Because if you don't have health, you're never going to have wealth. So they all go together. And if you don't have health, you are happiness. So everything is a circle. Um, if it doesn't come from God, try not to put it in your mouth, but make sure you're also cleaning it properly. And she talks about uh, tracking your food, but not tracking your food. Most people will put their food in an app and track the calories because they're watching the calories when it's really not the calories you should be watching. It's the content of the quality of the food. So uh, doing a meal tracker um, to then do a mood tracker and how you feel. And that is like such a key thing. So set just the calories, do the mood, how much water we should be drinking. There's so much stuff in this. And uh, most importantly, how we need to take our shoes off and go stand in the grass for at least 10 minutes because we need to connect with the earth going to build up our serotonin so we can get off these pharmaceuticals yes i bash pharmaceuticals in this uh, episode because it's it's more about like what you can do to get off of them um a lot of things are keeping us sick when we could be healing ourselves and everything we need to heal ourselves can be found in the earth Uh, i have not gone off the granola train don't worry i'm just being practical and i want everybody else to be healthy um there are some pharmaceuticals i have to take a thyroid medicine every day uh haven't figured out how to get off of that but one day i will hopefully there's something so if you know please comment reach out it's great i would love to know how to do a natural thing to get the thyroid thing um figured out but yes it is very very good uh so many things we can be doing so we don't have to be on be sick and then have to rely on these pharmaceutical drugs so uh grounding health as well nature all this good stuff it's going to be great you guys do not miss this episode we'll be right back after this brief message this is like one of these episodes that i'm going to put on repeat and listen over and over and over and over again so much good information so i hope you enjoy hey it's madison malloy just wanted to remind you to make sure you grab a copy of my book time to lighten the fuck up it is a great funny self-help book that is going to help you get out of your own way i have already helped thousands and thousands of people and they are on their way to living their dream life and I want every listener to be able to live their dream life as well. So grab a copy of the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble or even the audiobook on Audible. Now back to the show. We are back on this very exciting episode where we are talking about grounding. What is it? What is it? Well, we're going to find out and why it is so important. So on this episode, I've got with me Leslie Dowling, who is a functional medicine connoisseur, a podcast host, a public speaker, an equestrian. She's everything. So welcome to the show. How are you, Leslie? Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for having me on. Yeah, you're you're so welcome. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this because it was funny how you and I randomly connected. It was almost like meant to be because I kept seeing some stuff and and really digging into this and and researching this whole concept of grounding. But before we go into that, because that's going to be the majority of our talk, um, you have a podcast as well called Keep It Dirty. Tell us about that. Yeah, so keep it dirty was something I've always envisioned. Um, just speaking about grounding with Mother Earth, grounding, mm-hmm. um, and really just getting back to why we're here on this planet, why we go outdoors, why we want to appreciate nature and the sense of community while we're out, and just getting back to what Mother Earth provides when it comes to eating. So there's a lot of different yeah. fundamentals of um, keep it dirty. So I like that. It's kind of like a holistic approach on things. Yes. And actually back in the 80s and 90s, that was what we were labeled, holistic. Um, And now the new phrase or terminology, which is the same thing as functional, same as holistic. Yeah. No, I like that because you're hearing more and more and more. There's, you know, all these pharmaceuticals have so many side effects when we were provided everything we need to heal our bodies and we need to if you're on medications and you need them that's fine but if you can somehow get off of them you should get off of them 
So, and there's so much stuff we've been told that was healthy that is not healthy now. So it's making you question everyone and everything. Um, and I always tell people a simple thing is if it doesn't come from the ground or from nature, try not to eat it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, absolutely. Pretty simple. Yeah. So I want to talk about, and then we're going to get into some other kind of things that questions I have, but I want to talk about grounding because I, I, I seen this come up of how our shoes are actually hurting us. So I'm going to let you explain that whole phenomenon and how people can start doing this today to reap the benefits. Yeah. Well, and the fascinating thing is we are all energy. We're made up of energy. So um, if you really look back thousands of years ago, most people walked the planet uh, barefoot ground yeah. themselves there's energy in everything in the the ground we're walking on and as you connect and start walking now obviously we're not going to be walking on the pavements in the city because <laughs> we, we can't but any opportunity especially as it's warming up depending on where you're living you know getting back to walking in the sand if you're near the beach or walking on your grass in your backyard it's this really unspoken language of connection um, that is it, just really cool. And guess what? It's, it's free. We don't have to pay for it. So yeah. that's, that's a, it's really cool. So what are the benefits of doing this? It really releases that serotonin in you um, because I think uh, just globally, we've all been on this fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. So that parasympathetic nerve, which really, puts the brakes on, um, calms you, it, it kind of centers you. It's like deep breathing exercises. Um, and as you ground yourself and you start walking and you feel the texture under your feet of mother earth, it really starts opening you up to hearing the surrounding, like the birds or the wind blowing and, and really trying to decompress and take time out of having those, um, you know, listening to something, music, or even as you're walking, if you're on some sort of um, podcast, which I, I love podcasts, I'm a podcaster, we all are, but disconnect from your electronic devices. Yeah. And that's so critical and, and important. So yeah, and you say serotonin, and so many people are depressed, because they're not getting the proper serotonin levels. So this could help with depression, am I correct? That and also there's a lot of other things like, like incorporating trying to get better sleep patterns. Our circadian rhythm were offset when we stopped traveling. For example, I have a husband who traveled all the time, which was great because we get along so well when he travels. Love yeah, the yeah, totally. So, you know, we were all kind of like, okay, now what do we do? And it's that fear of what's the next thing, you know? And I think it's just staying in the green zone really nurturing your body, trying to get the sleep that we need to get back to some sort of patterns. Because when you're on a pattern of going to bed a certain time, getting up, you know, even kids had um, issues with sleeping because they didn't have to rush to the bus for a year. You know, they were yeah. working on laptops. They were that, that community, the um, was right. Was so there was a lot of factors that go into it. So, okay. And then how, how much time should some, to really reap the benefits, should somebody spend barefoot on the grass? Let's use that as an example, because most people have access to grass and not the ocean. Right. Um, you know, and for people that live in the city, I know it's a little challenging, but <laughs> even if they're, you know, like when I was living in Manhattan, there were parks, you know, if you could get to a park and just take your shoes off and even spend 10 minutes, even if you're sitting and okay. just soaking the sun, put your feet in the ground. Um, you know, it, it just depends on what, where you live and, and how much time you could take advantage of that. Um, and who cares if people are, see you walking in the park in the grass barefoot. Yeah. Um, who cares, right? Yeah. Anything so, goes now. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially in New York city. Um, yeah. okay. So 10 minutes. So, you you want the benefit really comes from within your feet, not just sitting in the grass. So it doesn't go, you don't have as much benefit of it going in your booty. 
<laughs> then you, well, should... <laughs> you get the whole energy. Like even if you're, you know, you see these kids or, you know, Play, just yeah. park, even with the blanket under you, you're still connecting with the ground. I mean, you're not driving past, you're not on a bike. I mean, it's great to go biking, but there's a lot to be said to actually feel that energy and the texture under your feet when you're walking bare barefoot. Absolutely. And so when did this study really kind of catch on? Like who discovered this? That, wow, we've been wearing shoes since the beginning of time almost. Yeah. I mean, this is something that's been around forever. I think a lot of, of our functional and holistic approaches are coming back and to the forefront because we were so desperate, like, I'm not feeling good. I'm compromised. How yeah. can, and getting back to, um, and it's really cool seeing that people are becoming their own advocates with their health now. Mm -hmm. you know, years ago, I think our grandparents, they were all like, listen to what the doctor said. The doctor knows best. <laughs> but it's not true, right? Well, they're, and that's, they're human and they make mistakes too. And, you know, doctors are, are smart, but they're human and they can be a little dumb too. Um, <laughs> so that's why it's always good to get another opinion about things. I mean, I think we're all aware that a lot of doctors are pretty dumb and we're wrong about a lot of things, but that's another conversation for another day <laughs> off YouTube where I won't get censored. Um, so no, I think this, I think this is really, really is, is good that people can do this and that they're aware, you know, kind of aware of this. I know that there's some funky shoes that have come out that are supposed to be, somewhat of a way to connect with the earth they're ugly as crap but um, yeah about? i'm trying to think i know there's the birkenstocks that's been around forever they used to call them earth shoes but they're still rubber so they're still defeating the purpose of being and barefoot there was a whole thing on 60 minutes about that over the winter and it's coming back and it, they're most of them are made of cork or like a natural material but it's supposed to like really mold to your feet yeah, I find it really hard and comfortable to walk in, but that's just me. There's so many great shoes that have awesome support or soles that um, are are really feel like okay, you're walking the ground and that energy, but it's still not walking barefoot, you know. Yeah. So, so try to yeah try to get out, especially you know if you're in the city or whatnot or, or wherever you are, especially if you have a house, if you know pure in, in nature which i think we all need to be um this is coming from somebody who used to live in the city i was like wow i'm so much happier out the burbs i never thought i would say that but things change things change yeah. when you're taking a business call when you're catching up with a friend it's a great time to just stand out because people are saying what am i going to do for 10 minutes well what do you always do go through social media talk to a friend take a business call there's a million things you can do yeah you and know those cigarettes. You're standing there yeah no no yeah <laughs> <laughs> just just take the dirt out Suck on something yeah. else that buys you a house. Just <laughs> kidding. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So this is, and then how does it impact our circadian rhythm? Well, what happens is when you have the serotonin and that just that calming effect, it's like um, a domino effect. It triggers other things in the system for peace, for calmness, kind of centered. Um, and if we could start connecting with that, taking those deep breaths, grounding with Mother Earth, it sets the tone for evening. If you're not in a fight or flight state and you're more calm, what's going to happen? You'll probably get better rest at night. And just trying to keep some sort of normalcy with sleep patterns. Maybe if you enjoy reading, you know, we talk about the blue lights. We talk about things that trigger our um, sensors to just always be awake and aware. Start unplugging the routers, yeah. especially kids that have the routers, their computers are all set up in their room and they're on their laptop or their iPad for hours on end. That's not going to calm you. That will no. definitely trigger you and stimulate you. These are the things that years ago as a little girl, we didn't, I didn't have all this. Thank God. You know, no, um, me neither. You read before bed, right? And I didn't have a TV in my bedroom, right? I do. I'm only human, but I tend to like I do herbal teas or I do my adaptogens, which is the mushroom um, and coffee, 
coffee for me is more of a calming, which is crazy. I do organic. I don't do it at night, but there are things that you could drink, teas, relaxing teas, chamomile to soothe the stomach um, and get into some sort of um, a pattern of, of what will calm you. Everybody's different. Yeah, no, no, it's very true. Um, I know because when you talk, when you hear about most people, I would say the last thing they do before they fall asleep, besides put their head on the pillow, is they are looking at their phone and then they plug it in and, and that's it. And then if they hear a buzz, you know, they got to pick it back up. So we're probably as a society not sleeping very well anymore. And and the TV, everybody has a TV in the room. I fall asleep to the Golden Girls usually every night. Oh, I love the Golden Girls. They're they so were funny. My, my grandmother. My mother. Yeah, I just love it. It's so funny. I always tell my little dog, I said, are you ready for the Golden Gals? And she just sits there and kind of looks. She even knows. <laughs> person after my own heart I have a lot of memories with my grandmother and she reminded yeah. me it was Rose and totally the Italian uprooted same thing just yeah just back a lot of great memories absolutely no it definitely <laughs> does and then the so you know and then when I get tired enough I'll turn it off and then fall asleep shortly after but maybe I, I probably should just watch it and then shut it off and then, you know, do my affirmations or whatever I need to do before. So like a half hour before you probably should have all that blue light stuff off. Yeah. And the other thing is you should have your phone at least five feet away from your head. Now I don't go down or it's across the, the room. So I wake yeah. up to turn off the alarm or a lot of functional medicine practitioners. They say, just turn it off and then just have a regular alarm clock to wake yourself up like people did years ago we all got through that um so those are the things that you know you really have to consider and also google i mean there's a wealth of knowledge out there there's a lot of summits that i have um listened to about the 5g towers which could be another topic of conversation but they're showing long-term yes. effects on a cellular level i could get really geeky and i'm not but there are well, a lot of people are concerned about that and we do have some time so i want to get into that because they're starting yeah. to go up at yeah. like all the major cities oh yeah and there's no control over it all of a sudden i'm like oh now i'm going through the boondocks and i could get really great like i could hear everything and then i'm like uh oh, 5g tower 5g towers up there i mean there was a study um from london um, and Lloyd Burrell is is a gentleman who really have has brought this to the forefront yeah. and had a lot of scientists on. And he spoke about the baby monitors and some babies had delay responses to speaking, late delayed speaking issues with verbal communication, because when that monitor is set off, when the baby cries, the, there is the radioactive, the waves that are coming through this monitor that affects some children that are very sensitive. Um, oh, so wow. a lot of crazy research out there. And this is something you could Google. Everything I say are things that I've done research on. Yeah. So talking about environmental triggers, what we're putting on our skin, which is the largest organ, toxins That's in our body. No, it's a bit, well, it's a big one too. And it, it's, you know, I have a friend who I think he, he's a, a guy friend, um, you know, very successful person. He was like, oh, I don't, will never use deodorant from a drugstore because most of us go to secret or degree or whatever the main yeah, brands are, little. but you don't want to use Tom's because then you have a friends because it doesn't work. Right. So he's actually spending like $50 on, on like Chanel deodorant. Apparently it's not as bad for you. But then but it has fifty dollars, right? Of and course, it has fragrance. You kind of want the fragrance. I mean, I kind of want if I lift my arm to smell good, right? I mean, but the one cool thing is, once you start eating clean, you start ridding yourself of processed foods, chemicals. You don't have that smell because the smell that you oh. are coming out are all the chemicals, the toxins, the meats that are injected to beef up these animals to be healthy and looking perfect. You know, these um, vegetables and fruits that look perfect and plump and red. A lot of them 
are on steroids. I mean, really crazy stuff that so, we don't realize. You, okay. So are you, are you saying that before all this modified food and chemicals came in that people really didn't need deodorant? Cause I feel like everybody that forgets to wear deodorant, we all smell the same. BO, yeah. BO, it's, ugh. I'm talking about like, if you're talking about maybe over a hundred years ago before when people ate whole foods, yeah, they sweat. Before the industrial revolution. Yeah. I mean, before the industrial, right. Before all the pesticides, I mean, the soil that's deplete, all that. Um, and, and yes, yeah, some of us have a, an odor to an extent, but if you start really looking into what someone's diet is and when they smell, I just work with clients that once they started really detoxing themselves, they even said, my senses were heightened. I could taste better. I could smell better. I'm at rest. I could, I have huge amount of more energy. Yeah. Um, and I don't smell as much as I usually do. It's really interesting when you start connecting the dots. Well, it makes, it absolutely makes sense. So let's go back to the 5G. So for years we had 3G. Nobody seemed to raise an alarm on that. Why is 5G so different? And why is it so concerning for all of us? Yeah, I think that's a great, a, a great question. Um, I think as we're going higher and higher of, of the way that the signals are being sent out all over the world, our bodies are absorbing all this. Yes. We really don't know what is going to happen, but there are studies that are out there that are showing effects of all of these 5G towers. And they are showing that on a cellular level, they are disruptors. But so the 3G, all, because they weren't as powerful, wasn't as much of an impact. And some people, as we are having more of these towers put up, the 5G, the, you know, what is the next one coming up? I mean, they're just more and more powerful getting out those that the the waves, the radio waves are going out and just, you know, the service is great. I mean, the smart TVs, um, even the AirPods that we're putting I don't in use those. are those are affecting us. How many people do you see there is a rising glioblastoma cancer, which is the brain cancer, cancer of the brain? Wow, I didn't know that. People always have their cell phones at one area. They have studies have shown that they found that there were more tumors in the area where they would hold their phones for years now, 15 years constantly. Testosterone, lower testosterone levels with people that put their cell phones in their pockets. This is a known fact. So what about like in your purse? Like, right? I have like a little, like, I have right here. I got a little purse. And then when I'm yeah. out, my cell phone's right here, you know, against my titty. Yeah. And my so think about what is it doing uh -oh. there? Is it, it's, it's affecting us in so many ways. And even women that are thinking of having a family or bearing a child in the fetus, there are over 200 toxins that this baby is ingesting before it takes its first breath. So people have to think about detoxing. It, it just, I mean, you know, sometimes, um, what is that? Something is bliss when you really don't know. Ignorance. What the heck. Ignorance, right? But all that I, all the research, all the years of studying, you know, you can't live in a bubble, right? You have to be proactive. You do the best you can, but there are ways that yeah, we can. Help. Right, because we're all going to die. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all going to die, right? Yeah. But if we could live optimally while we're still here yes. on Mother Earth and having a sense of community and getting back, if you read The Blue Zones by Michael Pollan, it's all about the people that live the longest are the people that have simple lifestyle. They're not tw doing 20 million things, racing. They have that sense of community and families. That yeah. they have. No, I mean, it's how powerful so is that? It is. Wait, so do you think the people that are that have created the like inventors of the 5G realize how dangerous it is or do they just not give a shit? I think it's it's a mixture of everything. I think at the end of the day, they needed to sit down with doctors, with people that understand the physiology of our bodies, our bodies on a cellular level. How is that affecting us? The engineers are striving for one thing, but really when it comes down to it, we need 
a symposium of a lot of people that really know on different levels, how is it affecting the human body? And I think that's way, where we are at fault. And that's where they had to really take their studies to a level of, of awareness. So now it's backfiring and it's right, all about- But these towers, exactly. These towers are still coming up and then you've seen things, you know, everybody d- d- doesn't want to admit something or doesn't want to think it's true. They call it conspiracy theories um, right. about all these people that had the mRNA vaccine. Mm-hmm. And when 5G really gets ramped up, what have you heard about that? What is that all about? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different rabbit holes you could go through. You know, the thing that's crazy about this virus is there's the long haulers, the people that long term now it's opening up Pandora's box to our weakest link. So this is just something that has just you've never seen. This is unprecedented. We've never seen anything like this where it manifests and it just attacks certain areas. Um, And it's the weakest link in your body and people will be fine. And then six months later, it just, you know, they start having compromised issues. So vaccine um, because of the vaccine with the vaccine with once we get the, the, the virus, um, and, and wondering, okay, and that's something that I wouldn't even want to start speaking into, but where did this originate? You know, yeah. where, where, yeah. where did this Yeah, that's a whole other episode that would get taken down on YouTube, but maybe I'll go for yeah. it. So it's, um, it's, it's, it has its own, um, you know, agenda, this virus, and it's, yeah. sm- and it's attacking uh, people in so many different ways that we never thought would happen. And this is not the end of it. I think we're kind of in a lull. And we're just kind of buckling in for the next stop with this gain of function research. Like just leave it alone. We don't need to know the potential viruses. How about we just get back to what we're doing and stop worrying so much and maybe we'll be sick less. Yeah. And stop the pharmaceuticals. Stop them because they're making us sick. They're not helping us. They can, they make us sick. You know, I take one pharmaceutical because I have a thyroid issue. That's it. And if I could get off of it, I would, but I'm lucky. That's all I have to take. Um, all right. So how do you, as a human being, listening to this, maybe some dogs are too, but they, don't, they can't speak, unfortunately, protect yourself against 5G? Because you can't fight it. So how do you no. protect yourself? There are a lot of ways you can do that. Unplug okay. it and leave. unplug your computers, the routers. I mean, what's the worst thing? So you got to plug it back in the next morning and you got to reboot the Wi-Fi. Wait, we- unplug your... Plug everything if you can it's just everything another meaning like if you just unplug your router you're good unplug the router i go th- by turning off my phones at night uh have the kids if you have children even if it's like away from you even if it's for- away from you because as much as we don't know really how it's affecting us we do know that there are studies that show that it is having an effect on our body so why not unplug because i don't want to be a statistic in 25 years dealing with cancer or whatever it could be migraines constant migraines or not being able to focus well, I think we're those, just being radiated so much in this world why i won't do those airpods people are like why don't you get the airpods i'm like i don't know there's something something a little weird about that. Yeah, and go with your gut. You're very yeah. intuitive. You're in tune. We all are. Start start tapping into listening to your inner voice. No, my inner voice is very scary in a good way because I'm very alert. I'm very, let's say, I'm very awake. I'm not woke. I'm awake. That's I'm awesome. I'm on to these people. I'm on to it. So I'm trying to just yeah stay in tune, stay aware, stay knowledgeable. That's how you win in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, just some scary shit. Oh, Probably yeah. people that live in the city. I, 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 I loved New York city. I loved it. And I, and I spend half my time there and it's, and it's wonderful what, when it, it used to be a lot better. Anyways, yeah. you, I, it's, it's the most unhealthy place you could ever live. Cities are unhealthy. You're not in nature. You're not around. Like people are miserable. It's overpriced, too expensive. It's dirty. Like, People are are un, inherently depressed, unhappy. They're in therapy. They're doing all this. And I'm like, get get out. Like, you need to get out in nature. We were not designed to be in these boxes. Like, we just weren't. 
We were designed to have space and nature, things of that sort. But anyways, if you're in the city, because I'm ha there half the time, you are in these buildings that have all this Wi-Fi shit going through them. You've got 5G towers on the light poles, light poles at night or the street signs. How on earth? I mean, they're going to wipe out all of New York City if they keep this shit up. Yeah. Well, what's really powerful is um, if you get an opportunity, check out, and I love following him, Dr. Mark Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N. He said, planet Earth will be around, but will the human race? Well, you it'll know? just restructure itself. It, it heals itself. It knows how to restructure. Yeah. I'm not, that's why everyone's like, climate change, climate change, climate change. I was like, yeah, it's only us that we have to worry about. The planet's going to be fine. They go through their cycles. The planet's not going anywhere. It's it's us, you know. Yeah. But the problem is we're creating things that are killing ourselves. It's us yeah. doing it, not Mother Nature. And we're not meant to be spent like it's such a like this process, instant gratification, speed it up, technology, technology. Um, you know, as much as I have to embrace it, and I do, and I think there's so many incredible things. I feel like it's Star Trek on steroids the advances in technology when it comes to helping people, I think we also have to rein it in a bit and just create a little more balance and be more cognizant of how we're navigating through this planet and um, really what's going on and being your own advocate. Yeah, no, absolutely. So what are some things that you think in your opinion after doing all this research and being in this field for so long that people should be uh, consuming every day? like amount of water yeah. supplements, lemon water, any of that stuff to be healthy every day. I'm talking every day. What What is like a non-negotiable in your opinion? And this is something when I present to companies on, you know, it could be 2,600 people, it could be 40 people, is start tracking what you're eating and connecting the dots with how you're feeling emotionally. The Ooh. food in, eating the mood and therefore you could gauge because a lot of us are gluten intolerant. We might not even realize it. We might have issues with dairy. We might not realize all the sugar that we are taking in yes. when it comes to all the process and packaged foods. So if we do that and drinking your water is really key because we need to flush all the toxins out and you could go through a whole day and not realize like, oh my gosh, I only had one glass of water. Like how crazy is that? You, you I've need had to try, I've had to track it or I'll put them in like bottles. But if I do glasses, like I'll try to be like, okay, you have to have four before noon. Yeah. And then, you know, another, another three more before five, because you don't want to drink too much because then you'll be up all night. You yeah, know. they say you usually take half your weight and and then um, figure out how much how many glasses and ounces that would be. Yeah, so, I, I I don't I don't buy I don't that only because I don't weigh that much. So I'm like mm, that's yeah. less than eight, eight glasses a day. I'm gonna just stick with the eight eight days. So mm -hmm. I I want to talk about this. I've seen recently like on TikTok and stuff, um, people doing water fast. What do you think about water fast? And they said like by day five they felt like their mind was like, whoa, like clarity. I think first of all, seek the advice of your practitioner. Okay. Because that is key. Some people might have, um, be diabetic. They might have um, higher low blood pressure. Um, they might be on certain things that might trigger something to offset something in their body. So okay. I would- okay. I don't follow the waves of what is really, you know, like the keto diet or this diet. Um, you have to really figure out if you have any food allergies. I do believe because, you know, a hundred years ago or so we did fast, but that 12 hour fast, when the sun went down, we stopped eating yeah. or really dinner. And then 12 hours later, the next morning, say like, I don't know, 10 or nine o'clock, you break your fast. Because this way, on a cellular level, we replenish and re we replace those cells and we have time to rest. Um, but we graze. We're watching TV at night. We're having popcorn at 11 o'clock at night. We're having whatever. And yeah. it's not giving our system time to recoup and regenerate. That I'm a firm believer in. 
So a, a minimum of 12 hours. Yes. And if you want to try these fads, just seek the advice of a doctor, a DO, a practitioner, somebody that's well-versed that knows your background. Um, you might have a pre-existing condition that you're not even aware of. And well, you don't I, yeah. Know something, you know. So I had a friend that did it for two weeks. And, um, but one of the key things he said was you have to make sure you're drinking electrolytes. Like or uh-huh. else you migraines and you're just so even just a pinch of, like electrolytes people think well I gotta go buy this fancy shit and overpay at Whole Foods no you don't pinch of salt water bam electrolytes you know that's like all it is but yeah, yeah so it's it's always interesting um it's funny though because I would say the majority of people that are fasting aren't doing it for the health benefits they're doing it for the waistline but I yeah. guess it be a health benefit like well. so right. okay so let's get back to uh everyday things that you would consume. So tracking your food, tracking how you feel. Right. What, what are feeling? some other things? Like I take magnesium at night every night because I have the flattest stomach ever because I poop regularly every morning. Now I didn't used to. Well, the other thing is it's a food mood poop journal. Google Bristol Myers chart. The the Bristol, I'm sorry, the Bristol chart. I was like, okay. Bristol Myers, that sounds like a drug company. Yeah, trying that's, to no, no. Uh, <laughs> my husband worked for Bristol Myers years ago. Anything with, the, anything with a pharmaceutical, get it out of it. Beat it. Beat it, nerd. Get out of here and your pharma drugs. Bristol you little chart. Bristol. Actually, okay. <laughs> yeah, what it shows you is, and I know it sounds really like, oh God, TMI, but it's good. Looking at the way the poop is formed. Or do you have good formed poop? Is, is it supposed to be a little soft, solid, but a little soft? Yes. A little yeah. soft, a little mushy. And if it's greasy, it smells a lot, then you have something going on. It could be your oh, Greasy? How would you know yes. if it's greasy? It could be slimy, greasy. I mean, there's <laughs> all these... And the reason why I know this is, ironically, vets, veterinarians with my horse, the first thing we do is when the horse is not feeling well, we look at their stool. Is it well formed? Is it runny? Runny could be that maybe you have um, a SIBO, like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or something going on. That's the first thing that they look at. And that's something now we're like, oh, humans should do that too. Well, that's been around for so hundreds of years. So track what you're eating connected to how you're feeling emotionally and also your poop. And that will tell you if you're drinking enough water which most people are not. That's so. a good call. Cause I know when I eat really clean and healthy and I drink enough water and I don't overeat, I don't eat a lot. Like I'll eat like mm-hmm. more fruits and vegetables and then protein. Cause I need, I want to look, I want like big muscles. Yeah. I feel great, but yeah. it's when I consume not so much food. I think that as a society for, for the pocketbooks of the food companies, we have been trained to overeat and we actually don't need as much food, which is why we're so obese and gross as a country. Look at the proportion all this crap. Yeah. In the US. I mean, you go over to Europe in the European countries, it's more like our dessert plate. That's their portion. Oh, it should be. And not this huge. And everything is oversized. It. I mean, people I see walking out of these drive throughs and I, I mean, it's like you could jump into the freaking glass. This <laughs> the big gulps, I know. Freaking. And I'm like, what is going on with this country? Younger people with diabetes, with celiac and Crohn's disease. I, I know. I mean, it's so much. It's so much in your, it's, you want to control, you want to have a hot body, watch what you eat. You want to have a healthy lifestyle, watch what you eat. It all comes down to the stuff. It's kind of like, you don't like how your genes fit, close your mouth. It, it all comes down to, to all that. But the problem is, you know, all these GMOs and pesticides. So the question now is, how do you properly clean your fruit? I know you should buy organic. Right. How, are you, how do you clean? So water's not enough. Yeah. And there's different things you could get that are organic sprays. I would Google it. I usually get organic and I rinse it off, but I have something with like, um, like lemon water, something like that's an astringent that I spray it with some water. Not sure if it's going to get everything off. You could go to your natural food store, health stores. They do have sprays that are organic, just in case if you if you are eating something 
you know, they had the uh, the group of um, what is it called? Uh, fruits and vegetables, the dirty dozen or something of things that you can eat that's really not necessarily organic, like a banana that has the skin on it. Oh, However, an orange too, maybe orange. I mean, people go by that, but at the end of the day, we're still not getting, we are deplete in magnesium and a lot of minerals because the soil is deplete. So I so, take my Mago seven and I poop. There you go. Or take an Epsom salt bath at night. I don't that do baths. I don't know why. Sense. I don't think I even have a bath in my place anymore. It's all I'm a bath person. <laughs> I need a bath in my next Essential place. Oils. I I do the Epsom salts, the lavender salts, but they're yeah. natural. They're yeah. not crap. <laughs> it's not like the uh, the the bubble bath at uh, your local Bath and Body Works where you you smell good, but all of a sudden you you got a hoo ha infection. You're growing yeah. a bread factory out of your vagina. It's like that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not normal. And the dyes that they're putting oh, in for these kids, Mr. Bubble Bath and all that stuff, that's the worst. That is yeah. just the worst. That's what we're ingesting. Our skin is our largest organ. Go figure. Well, and it's crazy. I mean, it, companies are getting better, right? The the organic stuff used to not clean your hair as well, not clean yourself as well, like didn't smell as good. But now they're starting to get better. Like you can actually, you know, you go to Sephora and you can get like, clean beauty there's some stuff that you know yeah. i use medical grade i don't know if it's clean or not but it makes me less wrinkly so i'm gonna die anyways hopefully <laughs> it is medical grade who, or uh clean who knows who knows i feel like i can't i feel like i've smoked enough cigarettes in my life i don't smoke anymore but i used to that mm -hmm. like i'm just immune to anything <laughs> 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 like That's my body's funny. like i can handle that i can handle everything that's why like i got covid like i had no cough no breathing issues no nothing that's awesome. My lungs were like, yeah, we've been through worse than this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but also for people that are listening in today, start reading the labels on the packages that you're putting into your cart before you bring it home. Make sure you know, because it's very deceiving. These bars, these breakfast bars. Oh, pine bars. Like, oh, oh, it's oatmeal. Yeah. Must be good. Well, do you understand how much sugar is in there? You might as well just eat a Snickers bar while you're at it. Because it'd that's be much better it's... too. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I like Snickers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I use I go. use it when I go to airports. Airports is my like eat whatever you want, do whatever you want. Like I just yeah, go, I go into an airport and everything about health just <laughs> flies out the window. And then when I get to my destination, I'm like, okay, I'll read it in a little bit, but I'll enjoy it. But for some reason at the airport, I mean like Swedish fish. Panda <laughs> Express, like, <laughs> like everything I wouldn't normally eat. I just walk into an airport and I become like a middle school child. And I'm like, what can I put in my pie hole? Like lifesavers. Oh, yeah. I got my whole thing of junior mints. I was like, yes, let's do this. I mean, it's my thing. But if when I start traveling more, I've got to stop that because then I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna be in real trouble if I'm in an airport every week eating like that. I'm gonna be in trouble. Well, I think what we need to do is have a kiosk and start this throughout the whole airport to have healthy foods because there's a lot of yeah. us out there to eat healthy instead of the stuff that they have. Yeah. So. Well, ex I, it, well, exactly. And there, there's you're starting to see some, but yeah. yeah, it's like get rid of the kind bars and all that crap that's like hidden as health food, but it ain't health food. Yeah. Um, but it, I know it's just so so interesting. So, um. Let's talk about vitamin D because there is also some things that are popping up. I got a lot of weird shit on TikTok mm -hmm. about sunscreens and how sunscreens are, are good to protect our skin against skin cancers and aging. But there's a lot of ingredients in sunscreens that are actually causing cancer. Yeah. So it's a losing battle. What are you supposed to do? And the other thing is the SPF. Once it's over a certain amount, like I think it's 30. You know, yeah. I mean, 50, 80, like that, it's it's the same thing. And, yeah. and the more concentrated it is. Now, yes, if you're lathering on every day, you probably have a tendency to possibly be more prone to skin irritation and um, and other issues. Um, and then when it comes to the vitamin D, they are showing a Huge. direct 
Watson with low vitamin D, people that have cancer, breast cancer, a lot of the people that they have studied have very low vitamin D levels. The other connection is people with low vitamin D levels, they have a tendency, a lot of them to have migraines. So once you start upping the vitamin D and every year it's different and you have to realize that the allopathic versus the functional norms when reading the your blood work is very different. So vitamin D, they're saying now, ideally it should be around 60 to 70. Years ago, it was 20 to 30. And when so, you say 60 to 70, what does that mean? That means like um, when you have your blood work done and you want to see your levels of where it should be. Oh, okay. Because so, I, yeah, I was diagnosed years ago. I was, I was in a horrible bout. It was about eight years ago. I was feeling really depressed. And my mother said, I don't think you should run and get an antidepressant. That's, that could cause worse problems. I think you should go get a full panel. And yep. one of the first things that they were alarmed about was how low my vitamin D level was because I didn't want wrinkles. So I was putting on the fake tanner. I was never in the sun, which was good for my skin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I was miserable. So I went on like a prescription vitamin D. And then when they got normal again, I was able to, now I just take like a 5,000, but I have to remember to take it daily. Um, but I also like to keep my arms unexposed if I'm just, if I'm not like out doing an event, but I'm just kind of like running around, like going to the car, going to the coffee shop, going to the grocery store, like keeping them unexposed. Like, I mean, like, um, no sunscreen so I can get some sort of natural vitamin D. But it's a cycle it was trying a, to figure it out, you know? I know. But it was the whole thing with COVID too. If everybody was actually vitamin D efficient, this never would have been an issue. Of course, the compromise, because yeah. a lot of people didn't realize that once they did get the virus, that it, like I go back to opening up the autoimmune illness, they could, yeah. you know, we all have things that are laying dormant in our system. And this triggers that wreaking havoc of just mm -hmm. um, really, some people were very sick. And yeah, so yeah, it it, 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 but hopefully it woke up a lot of people to where they're like, okay, I need to make lifestyle changes. I need to pay attention more to my intuition and not necessarily my doctor. I need to take their advice, but not solely rely on that because it might they might not have the best interest in mind or they might not know everything because they're human. We're, it's impossible. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it's just like, if it doesn't come from nature, if it didn't come from God, it probably doesn't belong in your mouth. Yeah, because and it takes well, well, the grains and the crackers. No, man, man, they manhandle that. I do love crackers. <laughs> yeah, we all have our love for certain crackers. Crackers but, and cheese at a party. Yes. But, you know, it's interesting, too, when you go through a drive through, it takes two days to um, for our body to digest and absorb the processed foods. Um, compared to two to three hours of whole foods, foods that we get from mother earth. So our body wow. is just overdrive. It's depleting us of minerals. It's causing aging, increasing aging and wrinkles. So maybe more women and men would, once they hear that, maybe they'll think twice. Yeah, some people are like, I can't see the inside. I don't give a shit. It's the outside, right? It's like, okay, but that has a lot to do with what you're putting on your face, what you're putting your exposure to the sun, um, your habits, like your water. Like, yeah. I think if, if people, um, a lot of people don't drink enough water. I think if they did, they wouldn't eat as much. And then That's if it. you're trying to eat, like today I was bad. Today I was having a little lull and I had, I had like a, a quick half hour and I'm like, you know what? I'm running to Starbucks and yeah. I got a chai tea latte, which I need to stop because it's loaded with stupid calories. I'm like, I drink black coffee in the morning. I don't need this crap, but for some reason it's my new thing. And then a marshmallow drain bar, Rice Krispie Treat. And I'm like, what am I doing? I have to stop. And it's $9. And I'm like, and I've done it like four days in a row. And I'm like, this right. is stupid. Like, what am I? I've got to stop this because now I just put in 400 calories in my body that I didn't need, you know, but, but yeah. And then let's talk about, let's talk about the alcohol. There's a big rise in, um, you know, non-alcoholic, you know, mocktails and drinks that'll calm you to give you that take the edge off make you more social which is great um mm -hmm. there's a lot of people going to the non-drinking not because they're alcoholics not because they have an issue but because for me 
I barely drink. When I go, when I'm in Colorado, because the altitude, when I go out, I'll stick to the same exact drink to the brand. It won't be vodka soda. It'll be Tito soda. They don't have Tito's. I'm drinking water. Okay. I can't even mix the brand or I'm wiped out the next day, like completely wiped. And I'm like, this is insane. And I'm like, I, and my friend, I have friends. They're, they're 40, 40 and 44. And yep. it doesn't, it doesn't impact their body as much. They're taking shots. Wow. Literally pounding shots and they're fine. And I'm like, guys. And my one friend said, I don't, I think I really need to cut back on the drinking. I'm like, yeah, not doing shots would be a good start. I'm like, I, I, I didn't think 40 year old women still did shots, but apparently you guys can handle it. I think my body is becoming allergic to alcohol. Well, the other thing is the cleaner you eat, the more sensitive you are to alcohol. So if you're eating really, like a good Coors Light, you know, <laughs> on a hot day. <laughs> exactly. Because I'm Greenwich face, white trash taste. <laughs> I love That's that. That's my motto. Yeah. What did I say? I said, uh, yeah, I've got the face of, Gre- face of Greenwich and the taste of a trailer park. You know That's what? How you describe me. We all are human, right? And we all exactly. need to just kind of let her hair down and just be, I'm all for that. I'm a bourbon girl. I've yeah. always been a cheap date. Like my husband said, he's the Irish guy that could drink till the cows come home. God bless him. But yeah. me, I have one drink and it goes right to my head, but I love my bourbon. And Which I isn't as bad for you because you usually have one. You're not having 17. Right. And that's where I give myself the hall pass. I'm like, you know what? I have eaten clean. I have, I had my kids all like understand. And really, I never was the preacher throwing it on them. I'd say, you want ice cream? You want soda? Go for it. You know, that's fine. But I give the, I gave them choices in life and they, they kind of gravitated to, yeah, I guess mom kind of has something that she's doing right. Cause she's feeling good and everything. So, you know, big picture yeah no it, it's so true I mean I think it just comes down to so many so many good things um what about uh some people do you have to be careful with your teeth uh the lemon water in the morning and then after the lemon water I want to switch to the benefits of people do a shot of apple cider vinegar but that's where you have to watch your teeth and with the lemon water because it it will start eating away at the just plaque. one glass a day that's it yeah. So what you want to do is just rinse your, your mouth out after you have the lemon water or the oh, apple cider. good call. Just with clean water, rinse it, just squish around. That's what I do. Um and yeah. and 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 listen to your body because for like years I would do the apple cider vinegar. Just looking at it, I feel like I'm gonna just I can't look at it. So I do fresh lemon, warm water before I have anything in the morning. That's and what I go. Everybody said, every health person says that, which yeah. means I need to do that. Oh, you don't? Well, I usually run down <laughs> in the day. Sorry, I grab my coffee. At least it's black and I'm not putting shit in it. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the only yeah. shit I put in my coffee is like a vital proteins collagen powder. But I try to hold off till later to do that one. But I do need to do the warm water and the lemon because it is very, very beneficial. You got to do the bullet coffee. Do you ever have that? No. Oh, is that the butter and the green, like the butter and the coconut? That sounds yeah. like my de- that sounds like a, a dinner calorie. Yeah. It's just, well, I don't put a lot in it, but the 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 coconut is great for you. The ghee. I put like maybe a teaspoon. And then I put my um, cinnamon and turmeric um, and wow. just a little raw honey to sweeten it up a little, but I'm not a big sweet. I don't have a big sweet tooth. Yeah. Um, and I blend it and it's like the best. It just, you know what I, I should try that. You know what I used to do? I used to put apple cider. I would take the apple cider vinegar yeah. and then I would have coconut water. And oh. I would take a sip out of the coconut water so it's space. And then I would drop like a shot of apple cider vinegar in the coconut water and shake it up. And I used to drink this, like walking to whatever job I had. And I mean, I was, dep- I was depressed out of my mind that year. I don't know why. <laughs> so it wasn't helping with my mood. Maybe right. my body was functioning, but my mood was horrific. 
uh that was like 2015 I remember I used to do that and then I'd have green tea I used to, mm -hmm. I feel like I was like and this is all I was used to smoke so yeah. at least I was offsetting something at least I was doing something but I remember but they say apple cider vinegar is really good for a lot of things like people if you get a wart on your foot speaking of being barefoot like if you walk and you pick up a wart on your foot instead of going to get it burned off like yeah. you just put like a pad of uh, apple cider vinegar and that's supposed to help too there's so many things in nature that can actually heal us that we don't really need to rely on the pharmaceuticals their job is to keep you sick to keep you on medication but it's not their fault they need to make billions of dollars so give them credit where credit's due right. but we can take control of our own shit and also be your own advocate when it comes to Re doing research on supplements because pharma is taking and scooping up all these. I know. I that's the thing is you've got to if it's owned by Pfizer, Moderna, whoever Johnson and Johnson, those like yeah. get rid of them. Where are they okay. getting all of their supplements? Where are they getting? Yeah. Okay. I know it's so true. So you just really have to do your research. And yeah. It's so to do the research. It, it will exactly. So I just wanted to take a moment to uh, thank our sponsor for this episode. Uh, this episode is actually brought to you by Pfizer. Um, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I'm kidding. They're never gonna sponsor me, which I don't give a shit because no. I don't support them in any way, shape, or form. So I'm good to go. But yeah, I had to throw that joke in there. I'm like Pfizer. This is sponsored by Pfizer. Pfizer, who <laughs> stop taking our medicine? They're gonna kill you. <laughs> um, some medicines are good, but the majority of them are actually just keeping you sick. So wake up, wake up. Nobody wants you alive except yourself. Trust me. So focus on what's important. Unplug your phones, uh, go outside, take your shoes off. Stop being so scared of the government. Like I am. Uh, but no, I, I'm not really, I'm not really that scared of the government. They don't bother me at all. Uh, I just am aware. So I just, listen to what they say in strides. And I think a healthy mindset around that and not, you know, it's kind of one of those things government says like, Hey, you should eat this. I'm going to be like, mm, probably not. I'm going to go eat that. Being yeah. aware and thinking for yourself because you're an individual, beautiful spirit of God. So uh, this was amazing. I love this. Uh, where can people find more information, learn more about you, listen to your podcast, all that great stuff. Yeah, so they could find my podcast, which is called Keep It Dirty on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple. And uh, my website is my business, which is eastwestfunctionaltraining.com. Perfect. I mean, you gave us so much information. I love this episode because I thought it was just so useful. I feel, you know, this is a podcast to make you happier, healthier, and wealthier. So this yeah. is definitely the healthier, but it goes into everything because the healthier you are, health is wealth, the wealthier you're going to be and the happier you're going to be. So just remember, you can kill yourself making millions of dollars, but if you don't have your health, none of that matters. I saw a great video. We'll end on this. Somebody said, hey, um, if I gave you $10 million, would you accept it? And the person said, yeah, of course. What's the catch? Well, the catch is you get the $10 million, but you can't wake up tomorrow morning. And he goes, no. And he goes, see, your life is worth more than $10 million. So start focusing on your life and living the best you can. I was like, what a great message. So I'm going to end with that. I think that was a good, good message. So yeah, def definitely go follow her. Make sure you guys are eating healthy. If it doesn't come from the ground or mother nature or God, don't eat it. Uh, know where your food comes from. A lot of these things are pumped full of steroids. Try to eat clean where you can. Try to get grass fed. Um, and uh, one thing I really like to encourage and, and I want to have one day is a, it's a big piece of land so I can grow my own shit. Yay. Yeah. Cause that's really where you're going to, you're going to save money and you're going to be healthier. So get out of the supermarkets and into your own, um, thing and magnesium and vitamin D very key. Um, this was a great episode. I loved it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. I'm so glad we connected. I can't wait to be on your show soon. And it's going to be amazing. And let's connect. Are you, you're in on the East Coast? I am near Philadelphia. Okay. So when I'm That's back in New York, we'll connect and we'll, we'll have a, a, a farm to table lunch. It'll be great. I'd love that. With and when, bourbon and Coors Light. <laughs> gotta, yes. Got to do that. Got to live a little. Absolutely. Got to live a little. Of course. Of course. Got to just 
you know, you're going to, the good news is we're all going to die. I mean, that's the good and the bad news. So live your life. Stop worrying about everything. Stop worrying about rain on it. Do what you can to live the best life and the rest of the shit you can't control. Can't control 5G. So just do what you can to control, which is unplugging your phone or at least take it the hell out of your bedroom. Absolutely. And it should should work. So, well, thank you so much for being with us. You guys go check her out. And thank you to everyone who is listening, wherever you may be. We will see you next time to find out who's next. Hey, your host here, Madison Malloy. Please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms. And please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at next to Madison.com. I thank you again for listening. Bye.